Welcome to the Root of Power podcast, where I teach you how to chase your joy, find alignment, and create a life and a business that you love using actionable methods, interviews, and inspiring stories from people who know that true freedom is found within. I'm your host, your always hype woman and sometimes ass kicker, Amanda Chills, and I am so proud of you for choosing to step into your power. Come along, we've got dreams to build. Okay, my love, I have put everything that I offer for free on one page so that we are not doing more work than we have to because why would we do that? Hashtag work smarter, not harder. So livemyhappyhealth.com slash free. You are going to find everything I've created for not only leveling up in your personal life and building a life that you love, but leveling up in your business life and building a business that you love. Okay livemyhappyhealth.com slash free. Love you. Hello, hello, Root of Power fam. We almost had a reschedule, but lucky us, persistent us, we figured it out. And here we are with Corey Zacker, a business strategist and consultant who I imagine helps people thrive and reduce overwhelm and cut out the BS so you can just do what you want to do and make money while you do it, which is like the dream. So welcome, Corey. Super stoked that you're here. Thanks, Amanda. And it's funny when you say, you know, I imagine you work with people that are feeling overwhelmed. And when I ask, especially business owners, um, who's overwhelmed? (laughs) Everyone raises their hand. Everyone. So it's all of us. Yes. I say all the time that entrepreneurship is like drinking from a fire hose. (laughs) Exactly. I agree. While also drowning in the ocean. Mm -hmm. Fine. (laughs) How did you get into the work that you do? Sure. I started my company about four years ago. Before that, I live in Los Angeles. I worked a corporate job out here. And all the rumors about our traffic in Los Angeles are true. So, you know, this was not a remote position. It was in person. And I would be sitting in traffic over three hours a day getting to and from work. So I think talk I would about overwhelm. Eat raw chicken. <laughs> like daily, yeah. I would rather eat raw chicken. Yeah, I, it was awful. I But I loved the job, loved mm. the people and the mission. So I stayed and did that for four years. Wow. So it was a super, it was lots of responsibility, lots of tasks and the commute. So I was overwhelmed. I finally reached my breaking point. And I left to start my own company. I will help small business owners run their businesses. But the funny thing is, is that I thought, yay, freedom. I have my own business. But I'm also a really good multitasker, Mm. which I think a lot of people, especially women, are. Um, So I thought, I'll do everything myself. And I quickly started getting (laughs) to that same burnout point. There was no traffic, but I was doing everything in my business. Mm. So I quickly realized I need to stop this um, in order for me to continue. And yeah. the the irony is I was helping other women with service-based businesses manage their businesses and take things off their plate and <laughs> all the things, but I wasn't doing it for You're myself. You're like, hey, self, we should probably implement yes. that. <laughs> so I, I did it and figured out different ways that helped me to kind of create a business and a life that was really balanced and that I loved. Mm. And my business has since shifted to that specifically what I do. I work with service-based businesses, helping to figure out what can you delegate? Who do you need need to hire to Mm. help you? What systems and automations can you put in place? And then the glue holding it all together is mindset. Um, Mm. So I became certified as a positive psychology coach as well to kind of, yeah, I mean, you can do put all the, put all your ducks in a row, but if you're Mm -hmm. not in the right headspace and owning your business takes a particular kind of headspace and being kind to yourself and knowing what you excel at, um, then it's not going to work. So I also work with, with business owners on that too, just getting into that place. Like, yes. I've seen this trend. I love that you have a certification because I I see this trend a lot where like 
nutrition coaches and health and fitness coaches are now suddenly mindset coaches. And it's like, mm -hmm. but tell me what you've done to study <laughs> human behavior or behavior change or cognitive processing or strengths-based behavior. Like, they're just like, I'm a mindset coach too. And it's like, you jumped on a bandwagon. <laughs> mindset, unfortunately, has become such a buzzword and so overused. Yeah. Which like... But People need it. So that's why people yes. are doing it. But I'm like, if you don't actually understand anything about behavior change or how the brain works, uh, right. you're a grifter. <laughs> so <laughs> I love that positive psychology certifications exist because positive psychology is wonderful. Like it plays to your strengths. It helps you use your strengths and self-compassion and encouragement as change agents instead of shame-based motivation. I can't I'm sure you know yes. how common that is. Like, yes. yeah. And it doesn't and, work. It's garbage. And I love positive psychology because, mm -hmm. and the more I, I would dive into it, it's not just, it's not woo woo. And there's nothing wrong with woo woo. I get my woo woo yeah. on. Um, <laughs> but it is actually science based and they study it. They have studied happiness mm -hmm. there. So it's, I love positive it's all these great exercises and tips and tools, and they're fairly simple to kind of figure mm -hmm. out how to get you in that positive space. And it's not right. denying the negative. I mean, we all have right. crappy things. Happening yeah, it's not toxic night. positivity where you're like, no, nothing, no bad energy allowed. Like, that's not, no, not okay. at all. <laughs> but it's focusing, you know, traditional psychology is let's fix what's broken. Let's fix mm -hmm. what's bothering you, which is fine. And it's helpful. Is, it has its place. There. It has its place. But positive psychology is, let's focus on what you're really good at and what your strengths are and what lights you up. And, amplify and let's it. take that, yeah, and even step further. So I love you can that. hear me get all geeky and excited about it. Please do, we love. <laughs> and I love that you said the majority of business owners need mindset work. Like, I will die on the hill that, you know, the statistic that like 90% of businesses fail within three right. years. Like, I don't know if they've updated that and if it's still true, but that's the one that I hear the most often. And I am convinced that the reason isn't because you can't do the steps to entrepreneurship. Like the steps to running a business are not super difficult or complicated. Mm -hmm. File the right paperwork, pay your taxes, get customers, serve them, be awesome, keep going, right? Right. But the <laughs> the demons that you have to confront, the fears that you have to face is on un entrepreneurship forces that unlike almost anything, probably like big long term relationships force it. But mm -hmm. entrepreneurship forces it in a totally different way, like all your shit about money, being worthy, being seen, being good enough, failing like, yeah. Welcome to the thunder, though. <laughs> That's <laughs> entrepreneurship. It's true. And I, it's something as much as I, you know, preach here are ways to improve it. Mm -hmm. It's something I still have to work on every single day. You can't when just say, level, same well, now I'm a positive psychology coach. Everything's right in my world. It's just right. like, no, yeah. I have to work on this every yeah. single day. Welcome to my and world. Day, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some days are better than others. Um, no, for sure. But, but yeah, if you don't have that piece in place, all those Everything falls apart. Said. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, when I work with someone and figure out, hey, you may need to hire some help instead of doing it all alone in your business, even if now it's just like a virtual assistant for now. You figure out how much they're a control freak, right? Yes. <laughs> or suddenly, like, I'm a leader, and that imposter syndrome comes up. Like, who am mm -hmm. I to lead somebody and pay them a salary? And right. you know, there's a lot, a lot of that. So. And I find, and I'm sure you find this too, once people work through one version of that fear, another version comes up because you can have imposter syndrome on hiring a team, but you can also have it on launching a new product, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so I'm a therapist. I literally walk and have walked hundreds of people through healing people pleasing. And I built a course on people pleasing and I'm like, everyone's going to think I'm an idiot. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> but right? like, I have literally hundreds of people of proof that like the system works. And I'm just like, no, nope, everyone is going to think it's horrible. It's never going to work. And then I'm like, what? So yeah. you can even have these things in different like 
uh, circumstances and they're sneaky, right? Which is why it really helps to have a coach who not only has a bird's eye view of your business, but a bird's eye view, a bird's eye view of your patterns. Yes, absolutely. And becoming that. aware of that, like, here I go again, sinking into those mm -hmm. negative thoughts and trying sure. to get around that. And sometimes, you know, one of the early steps that I took um, was calendaring in time to step away. Mm. And the thing is, the first step was putting it in the calendar, like literally 20 minutes, I'm going to eat lunch. Woo. <laughs> I know, I just started a lunch break this year. Yes, right? It's or nice. 20 minutes, I'm going to walk the dog, get some sunshine. Mm -hmm. And I would put it on my calendar and I wouldn't honor it. Yeah. I would be busy working all day for other clients. Mm -hmm. I would honor them, but not myself. So that was a big mindset shift of just like, no, the time I put on the calendar for me is just as important. Mm -hmm. um, so I started honoring that. And then it, it eventually got to the point I don't have to put it on my calendar anymore. <laughs> yeah. I was proud of that. So. That's um, a big deal because it's it's hard, especially as a service based business, right? Because you're literally like your entire business revolves around serving other people. So right. that just becomes your default is to neglect and to to serve others. But at some point that leads to such an intense burnout. Is, mm -hmm. And is that where you see people starting to come to you is like they're kind of hitting a burnout mark? Yes. Absolutely. They can be having a really successful business and, mm -hmm. you know, their numbers are really good. Yeah. But they're sitting on their couch at midnight doing their own invoicing and billing and still taking care of their kids and yeah. and doing all the different jobs that they don't have to be doing. Yeah. Um, and are super close that, you know, like that statistic we were talking about before, whether it's accurate or not, that 90 percent of businesses fail. Mm -hmm. um, part of that is thinking I have to do all this myself. 100. Yeah. Which so, isn't true, right? Like I was talking to a business coaching client about that today and she's a photographer. And so we were talking about um, like bringing someone on to edit and editing is a very, very like specific personal thing. Like every photographer has a different style. And mm -hmm. she was like, how do I even teach that? And I'm like, bet girl, I got you. So we talked about like when people think about outsourcing, when they think about delegating, when they think about bringing on a team member and it becomes like, how do I take something that I do naturally or that now comes naturally to me and reverse engineer it into a system? And a lot of people don't know how to do that. So I was, my cat's about to join. So <laughs> I was telling her like, film yourself editing and talk yourself through the process. Why do you do this this way? Why didn't you make this choice? What makes this a good choice? Yes, Kitty. What makes this a, a choice that you didn't make? And I was like, give them that video. And then the more checkpoints that you have throughout. So I'm like, they, you know, they would do the first five or 10 photos and then they're checking back with you and they do another five to 10 and they're checking back. And I said, eventually you won't have to check on them because they'll get you. Like most things can be systemizable. And I think people just don't know how to do that because like creating systems is its own skill set yeah sure and it's okay that if you start a business it's not intuitive how to do all these oh, things for sure. how to make it run you so getting the help it. is okay right yeah absolutely and that's a great that was great advice that you gave to that photographer because oh. i don't know if you've ever read the book um clockwork by mike michalowicz no, but I love Mike Michalowicz. P.S. Right. If anyone knows him, I want to be his friend. But I, <laughs> yeah, so we want to be we, friends with Mike. Hook us yeah. up. Like we yeah. love. He really has a knack for explaining systems. Yes, he's yeah. really and really about. simply. Yes. Because that's what reminded me. In he says this in Clockwork, like make a video of what you do and mm -hmm. exactly what you said. So he talks in there specifically about he calls it the queen bee role of your business. Mm -hmm. So yeah. getting back to that photographer example, mm -hmm. the queen bee role that needs to be protected is the wonderful photographs that that photographer takes. Right. That person doesn't need to be bogged down by the editing process and the scheduling and the whatever else is involved in the business. Yeah. So you have to determine what's the queen bee role of what you do mm -hmm. and protect it at all costs. Yeah. So it's a great book. I highly recommend it. It's just a, 
Oh, it's on my list. <laughs> my, <laughs> I will die with a stack of books next to me. <laughs> but yeah, we love Mike Michalowicz. So what are some of the things that you walk people through? So it sounds like you help them create systems. You help them figure out where they need to, where their zone of genius, where they need to delegate. Um, and I would be willing to bet that a lot of people come and they're like, well, it's too early to do those things. I don't have enough um, time or revenue or X, Y, Z to do those things. Like, so what are some have of the you things? Been listening? You have you been listening into my client call? <laughs> <laughs> I know your people. <laughs> yeah. You know, and we're all. I actually just hacked your computer two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> we're all the same. Um, yeah, well, right. I mean, come on. I was there. Really? We try to think we're unique, but we all do it. Yeah. Um, one of the first things I do is an exercise to figure out where those things they love are, where the things they hate are, and how to get rid of the things they hate. So I call it the, the yay, nay giveaway exercise. And we literally just, I make a document, share my screen with them, and we go mm -hmm. through it. I say, okay, your yay list, what do you love? Yeah. And it could be all the things, oh my gosh, I love taking photographs and working with clients and doing I love podcast interviews. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and it can be personal too. You know, I love mm -hmm. cooking and that's something mm -hmm. I don't have time to do. I love walking my dog. The nay list are all the things that drain you, the mm -hmm. things that you might even be good at some of them, but they drain you and you hate doing it. For me, it's invoicing and bookkeeping and blank yeah. numbers. Um, as much as I'm aware of my numbers, I just right, don't right. get too deep in there. Um, and then the giveaway list. Okay, let's look at those things on the nay list, figure out what you get rid of totally. Mm -hmm. Let's admit it. There are some things that we do that we don't necessarily have to. True. And what could you delegate? And it yeah. doesn't mean you have to, getting back to that mindset of like, I can't do this yet. I can't afford it. Mm. I've worked with some clients where I said, you can hire a, a virtual assistant for two hours a week, and you're not going to believe what a difference that's going to make. Oh, in my God. That might be like $50 a week, $60, depending on who you hire. Um, and you, you'll you be amazed at what oh, yeah. is taken off your plate and just you then have more bandwidth to... Mm. Get creative, figure out new offers in your business. Yeah. Hey, I don't know, spend time with your kid or your partner. Yeah. <laughs> or Do things you enjoy, crazy. Yes. And if I you're worried about- find... Oh, go ahead. I just, a quick story. If you're worried about the investment, I always like to tell the story of a client I had who came to me, we did the yay nay giveaway exercise. We determined she needed a project manager for her business. That would be her ideal first hire. Mm -hmm. She invested $1,000 a month on a project manager within a month of having that project manager she was able to sign a new five thousand dollar a month client so hey awesome. sometimes you make that initial investment right. and you'll see the returns pretty quickly and now they have more room to better serve that client so that five thousand dollar a month client is much happier which means yes. they're going to give you more clients i love that i hired a virtual assistant this year and the amount First of all, she's way faster than I am. Right. I don't even know how she gets things done. So fast. <laughs> I'm like, you. you're not normal. Like, <laughs> but she's just, I'm like, hey, can you have this? She's like, oh yeah, here you go. And it like takes an hour. And I'm like, this would have taken me 7,000 years. Yes. I would never have done it. Because one, I don't want to. <laughs> and two, I'm slow. So <laughs> it has been, I mean, she was doing 20 hours a week. No, 20 hours a month for me. And it was like $350, which is not crazy. Like right. if I had to pick up a part-time job to pay her to do those things, I would have freaking done it. Mm -hmm. So I think, especially now, like, and I'm sure that, that this is something that you work on people with, like the amount of things that you can automate is literally never ending. And so like Slack, right? Like if people know what Slack is, it's like a communication mm -hmm. platform and you can integrate a bunch of things with Slack that are free yep. that really can streamline a business so much or like if you're a service-based entrepreneur and you're paying for an email platform like that 10 12 15 dollars per month will save you hours of automated emails that you can send and it's so 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 worth it like especially because there's so many free ones out there so what are some of the like platforms that you tend to see people use and do well with and that you recommend? Oh, sure. Um, well, talking about email, I'm a fan of ConvertKit, um, okay. which which has a free version. 
free version, you don't necessarily get the automations with, but then for if you upgrade to a small fee a month, you yeah. get it. So like I none of them that. are crazy, right? It's not like they're like a hundred bucks a month. Yeah. Yeah, they're not at all. A um, big fan of Slack, like you said, which mm. their free version you can do a ton yeah. with. A ton. Um, I use ClickUp for like managing. I, yes, that was in the next on my list. Yeah, I yeah. have used the free version for the last three years and mm. I'm perfectly happy for my needs. And yeah. you can integrate with, with your calendar, with your email. You can attach files. You, I mean, I probably use like, 11% of what you're looking up to do. I think I use one, you know? <laughs> 1%. And I'm like, oh, you can do email. I'm about to look into that. Right. Like, but right. it helps. And yes. Yeah. And so I'm a big fan of the Google suite as well. Like I'm in, I'm an Android baby and no iPhones. Don't come at me, Apple people. <laughs> um, but like, I love Google Sheets. Like I'm not paying for Microsoft Word. Why would I do that? Google Sheets yes. is free. Yeah. Google Sheets, Forms, Google Drive, Docs. All the things. They're free. The slideshow slides, it's, yeah, it's all free and it's right there. That. What else do you see people like really benefit from using? Canva is one if you're a service base and you're doing like your own graphics. I use that. Their free version, I use a, have used for years, love them. Yes. I recently upgraded to their paid version because they have a great you scheduler see. in there. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can schedule the social media. Yeah, you can schedule your social media. I like that. Also, okay. if you need any backgrounds or photos or things, the paid version has a lot of great, mm. a lot more options. But the free is absolutely, but, yeah, absolutely, absolutely fine. I also have had clients that Trello really speaks to them. They like mm -hmm. that layout of moving, being able to move blocks from day to day or list to list. Cool. Um, and yeah, whatever it is you need, there's something out there. And it's, there's probably that's what I, Exactly. And that's what I always, it's got to be something that works for you. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's like ClickUp versus Asana versus, you know, everyone, everyone will <laughs> die by the one that they <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> like Apple versus Android. They do the same thing, but like, I will never buy an iPhone. I'm it's just, just like, the way it is. But they're the same, right? <laughs> um, oh, and Zapier also is, mm. is like, I geek out on that. That's a program that makes all your different apps talk to each other. So it's like, if someone signs up for my email list, please put them on this spreadsheet in my Google Drive or you know whatever you want. Super nice. It's kind of miraculous. Yeah, I love that. So people are coming to you and they start really overwhelmed and they don't know what to do. And then you're like, listen, do this framework. What do you love? What do you hate? What can we get rid of? And then what? Then um, I usually work with clients in three month increments as a as a strategist and consultant and depends on what we determine what they need next. Mm. Like there was the one client that I brought up before that hired the project manager. We did the yay nay giveaway. We figured out the project manager. But then I we kind of dove into okay, how do you hire this person? Where do you find them? How do you onboard them? Right. How do you create SOPs like mm -hmm. you said of make a video of how you do this. So mm -hmm. we go, th we went through, I guided her through that whole process of how to bring on the person, how to train them. Um, and then interwoven every time that we met, it was a lot of, she was going through a ton of imposter syndrome because mm -hmm. she has, she was becoming really busy, um, very successful and started building a team. Yeah. And yeah, it was wonderful, but she was also scared and, and needed yeah. some coaching on, well, how do I communicate with them? So mm -hmm. I also work on team communication and culture and awesome and things like that. So because that matters, right? Like I can't tell you one sure. of the things that makes me the angriest. One is con artists in the coaching space, but that's not what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Two is people who were who are bad leaders, who are toxic leaders, who remain in their positions. That it's makes infuriating. Right. <laughs> no sense to me. Like yeah. I was really lucky when I was working for companies that I had really good bosses, like really quality, strong leaders. And I can tell you now, like I would not have stayed for bad leaders. I have been told that I was, what's the word? Not disobedient, anti-authority, whatever my whole life. Right. Cause I'm like, you're just literally incompetent. Like I, what am I supposed to do with you? You suck. Like you don't know what you, you are an authority right. in title only. I don't have to respect you. Turns out bad leaders hate that. And I'm like, no, oh, stop sucking. <laughs> sure. 
Um, but that is that will kill a business slowly because mm-hmm. it takes a while for like the poison to spread, but it will kill it deader than almost anything I have ever seen. And switching from a solopreneur where like you kind of own your job to running a company, stepping into that CEO role really does take a lot of coaching. And you have to be so, so, so intentional about the team that you build because they will make or murder your business like so quickly. So how do you help people? Like what are some of the um, like pillars maybe or frameworks or like shows to die on (laughs) that people need? The first thing we talk about is what their core core values are. We mm-hmm. might have a session just diving into that. Figure out what is important to you. Like one of my top core values for my life and my business is fun. You always, yeah. always keep the sense of humor in it. I'm not saying I'm sitting around laughing and giggling all day, but right. that I need to work with people who also are can fun. like not take it too both. I can't work with every, every <laughs> second. Yeah. So getting clear <laughs> on that, <laughs> get clear on, on your values and get clear on your strengths. I like using Clifton strengths. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of, or the Colby a to really, you can say like, I'm really good at spreadsheets or I'm good at this, but to, to do one of these um, assessments and really yeah. say like, you get a lot of clarity on like, For me, I'm a big follow through person. Give me a task list as long as my arm and I check it off. So I know like, hey, this is what works for me. Um, And that can help you hire team members to complement that. You don't want them Mm -hmm. exactly, you want them to align with you, but you want complementary strength. So you can build a good team saying like, well, I'm the task master. Mm -hmm. I need someone who's an ideas person. That's gonna come Mm -hmm. up with all, you know, be great at ideas and I need someone else who's great with numbers and yeah um, so we, we'll go through that and and kind of that brings into focus mm-hmm. who your team should be and when you're interviewing and hiring um, making sure they're in alignment with that I love that so I'm under I operate under the mindset that like you can train almost any job as long as it like, obviously the person is a good fit. Like if they hate numbers, you don't want to train them for a numbers role. Or if they like have to have a certification, then obviously mm-hmm. they have to, like for, if I'm hiring a therapist, they have to be licensed, non-negotiable, obviously. Sure. But you can train almost any job. Like I can train you how to be a therapist in the way that I want you to be a therapist, but I cannot fix like a crappy person. Right. And I find that a lot of people will hire someone who fits the criteria or they'll be like, well, they were the only candidate. And it's like, it's way better to leave a spot open than it is to hire the wrong person, especially if you're not willing to have hard conversations and fire them. That's a hard lesson to learn. And that's yeah. a really common one. I remember, and, and you know, simple advice to that is don't hire in a panic. Always hire, mm-hmm. try to hire before you need to, if you can, that's something yeah. else. Really if think about, okay, what are, what are the gaps? Where do I need help? Um, let me hire as soon as possible. But I did that once. I remember years ago, I needed someone on my team who was a numbers person. And I interviewed someone and she really knew her numbers, but I disregarded the kind of values and personality part of it. Like the culture. Yeah. Yeah. She gave me a few hints in her interview. It's not like she surprised me, but I was (laughs) in such that panic mode of like, I need this person and I need Mm. them yesterday. But I hired her and, you know, Two weeks in, we both said, yeah, this isn't working. <laughs> you yeah. know, it was a and that's thing. like the best case scenario because often yes. companies go years mm-hmm. with someone who is incompetent at best and toxic at worst. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, you you are really going to keep that person. <laughs> well, what do they say now? It, it's higher slowly, fire quickly. Yeah, yeah. which is much better. Um, what is like the number one trait that you end up teaching the most? That's a good question. I think, um, you know, I often get feedback from clients of, oh, you made me feel so calm. There's just a ton of stress out there. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's people not taking care of themselves and being stressed out and not taking those breaks. 
during the day, learning how to sit back and breathe and say, this is not a real emergency. This can wait. My self-care is a little more important right now. And then I'll be better for my clients and for my team. In many businesses, like it's not life or death, right? So like therapy is a little unique where like, yes, sometimes it like literally is life or death. Um, But if you are a business coach, if you deliver uh, courses for people, if you are an Amazon driver, like unless someone is getting insulin through Amazon, um, it's not life or death. Right. So we don't want to always be reacting as if everything is on fire because then you can't sit back and be like, why is everything always on fire? How can I just make things stop being on fire? Right. Which is so much more helpful than running around. Can you not? Yes, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, mother's not paying attention to me? Must. (laughs) Must Must be on camera. Right. She's obviously doing the wrong thing. Um, so you end up teaching self-care a lot. Do you just have them like schedule it? Do you have them literally like go on vacation? Yeah. I had a client. I first, I, and I start in small increments. She Mm -hmm. was working seven days a week, long, long hours, running her own business. So we started small with, I want you to take a walk around the block tomorrow. It literally, that's, that's how deep she was in the, in the non-self-care world. So we started with that. And then I said, and let's look six months down the road, six months down the road at that point was summer. I'm like, how about taking a week off and planning a trip? And when she finally did it, she she, she reported (laughs) to me a couple of months later, like I booked Hawaii for a week in July or something. And it was so good for her. Yeah. How much fun did she have? Like how nice was it? I mean, exquisite compared to where she was before never taking a vacation so yeah right so yeah yeah how was the transition for you coming out of corporate into working for yourself like how has that been um i loved it i i did not work in a toxic corporate atmosphere at all it was a lot of great people i know there are many other stories out there mm-hmm. um it can be I good loved, if you find the right company yeah yeah and i really had i did um so for me the transition was pretty seamless especially since that three-hour commute was gone i was so happy to be home three hours one way three hours both way like an hour and a half each way total and that was on a good day there were some nightmare days that were even longer so but but it's funny i took with me from corporate some of the things like you know goal setting and checking in and kind of Mm-hmm. looking at the different quarters of the year and saying, okay, here's what I'm going to do this quarter and here's yeah. my revenue goal. And um, so, yeah, I was grateful for all that, but I was also happy that I wasn't in that kind of regimented, you know, mm-hmm. meetings every other day, not every other day. What am I saying? Every other hour you're in a meeting. <laughs> um, it's all changed now. I think since uh, this was pre COVID. Um, yeah. I'm sure it's definitely shifted. I think it's shifted and more relaxed than it was when I was there. But yeah, I don't miss that. Hmm. I love that. What else we got? (laughs) So when you're having people set up like their ideal schedule, what do you find is like the biggest thing that they change? Just like more time for themselves or like. Yeah, because they don't have that in there. Yeah. Um, And also and what it again, I tell people, let's figure out what works for you. Mm. Some love time blocking. Some love, you know, I'm working with clients on Tuesday and Thursday. Mm-hmm. Monday's my CEO day where I, you know, dive into my business and I really figure out, get creative. What are my next offers going to be? Mm. Um, maybe Wednesday is uh, I'm engaging on social media. I'm having coffee chats. I'm networking. Kind of yeah. Day. Um, but I've had other people say, like, that doesn't work for me. I need to do a little <laughs> bit of each every day. Yeah. That way. Instead of, I couldn't stand a whole CEO day on a Monday. It would drive me crazy. (laughs) So again, it's tailored to what works Mm -hmm. for them and incorporating breaks. Yeah. I love that. And I, I think, I think people miss that about business is like you get to run it Mm -hmm. in the way that works for you. Like I work from home. I wear leggings and a t-shirt pretty much every day. 
I said right. under a field. I said under a field. That doesn't make sense. I said under a tree in my field and mm -hmm. do therapy. Like, and it works for me and it works for the therapists that I bring on because if it didn't, they wouldn't work for me. And it works for my clients. Like, and I think the beautiful thing about building the business your way is that you're happy. It's like, yes. like we start a business to have more freedom. Right. And then I love the quote that like entrepreneurs are the only people who will quit a 40 hour a week job to work 80 hours a week. <laughs> right. But if you're doing that two, three years in, like, and depending on your business model, one year in, that's not a, okay. Like sometimes it's inevitable. Like some seasons of business take much, much, much more time than sure. other seasons. But if you're a slave to your business, that's not the point. Right. You're that's missing out on all the, yeah. Well, the yeah. freedom that you left your last your mm -hmm. corporate job or whatever it was for. Yeah. It's there, but you got to build it. Yeah. And I get it when you first start, everybody's a little bit in panic mode, like, oh, wow, I'm responsible yeah. for my own paycheck and revenue. Yeah. And so you start doing everything and serving everyone. Um, so. And yeah, the hustle is real. Time. Like, yeah, you have to hustle in the beginning because you're building something from scratch, right? It obviously takes a lot more work to build a house than to live in a house. Sure. But at some point, ideally, you're taking a step back and saying, okay, how can this sustain me and not just how I, how can I sustain this? Yes, definitely. And have a life outside of this business as much as you love it. Right. Oh yeah. Like I love to work, but there's some days where I'm like, bro, if I could just be on, if I could just be in Tuscany, like I would not be upset. My alter ego that lives in Tuscany is like living her best life. <laughs> she makes pasta yeah. from scratch. She Have you ever been there? She's thriving. Uh, we went on a trip when I was like 16 to Italy and it was my life dream. One of my life dreams is to own like a little apartment in like Florence and just mm -hmm. sip coffee mm -hmm. and listen to people speak Italian for like weeks on end. Um, so oh, we're right. on that. <laughs> that's, that's a wonderful dream. I, I went um, six years ago and it mm -hmm. was a yoga and wine retreat. It was heaven in Tuscany. What? That's so it was like, we'd wake up, do yoga in the morning and then yes, eat great food. And I didn't even drink wine, day. but like I would go. Yeah. I would go. Yeah. It was heaven. I did get a message from a man on Instagram who wants to be my sugar daddy today. So maybe I'll ask him to buy me an apartment in Florida. Maybe he will. Something to think about. Hey, bro, listen. <laughs> I promise I won't ghost you. Just put it in my name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the wild word of Instagram. That's here nor there. But it is kind of funny. <laughs> So how, so people work with you in three month blocks. How long do you find that people work with you? Do most do the three months? Do most take like six to 12? It, yeah, it depends what they need. Usually it's a three to six month. A lot of times after the three, they'll, they'll say, I still need you. We still need, I still want to work yeah. on things. And, um, and they'll go for six months. Um, I'll also do one-offs. I'll do a 90 minute strategy session. Mm -hmm. You know, I just worked with someone who had started her own business. She left corporate a couple of years ago, started her own business and wanted to pivot what direction she wanted to go in. She cool. had started offering one thing. So we worked together 90 minutes doing the yay-nay giveaway because that helps in all these circumstances. Yeah. Like I'm figuring out like, okay, how are you going to make this move? Mm -hmm. um, I've helped companies plan their team retreats in a cool. strategy session, which is really fun. It's just getting their team together and figuring Wine out. Wine and yoga in Tuscany. Wine and yoga <laughs> and, you know, a little bit of work and goal setting. Yeah. Thing, but a lot of culture in between and, wine and yoga. Fun. In between wine and yoga. Yes. Um, oh, so, yeah. So, I love doing that. Isn't it so cool that, like, you can really build a business doing anything that you want to do? You really can. Like, there's people who make, like, you know, those like uh, ambient noise videos on YouTube where it's like a fireplace crackling or right, like right. fireplace and rain. Like those people probably make significantly more money than I do. And mm -hmm. they just like make videos and put them on YouTube and make money from it. And I'm just like, oh. God bless the Internet. because You can literally do anything. It is. It is. That's the exciting part of entrepreneurship, I think. Yeah. You know, have an idea or a passion. Just like, you know what? You can make that a paid business. Right. 
Like you want to, you want to make cat toenail polish? <laughs> I don't know if anybody will buy that, but like, you know what? That's a possibility. Yeah. Do your market research. That's right. I'm going to that one, but like doggy nail polish. People like to paint their dog's nails. Yeah. Hmm. Are you someone who like has a lot of business ideas or is one of the reasons that you like working with other people? Cause you can like get into their business idea. I love, I love exploring that with other people. Um, I come up with ideas, but I, I'm much better at hearing other people's ideas and kind of <laughs> reining them in and figuring yeah. out, okay, what direction are you going to go in? Yeah. That's mm. my I'm someone who like, if I'm driving, I'll call my sister and I'm like, Hey, Here's I have an idea. An idea. <laughs> I have an idea. Or I'll tell my mom and I'll be like, so I've been thinking. <laughs> and both she and my dad are like, oh, God. Here it comes. <laughs> right. And I'm like, what if we did this like totally ridiculous thing? And they're just like, yeah, sweetie, we love you. <laughs> we don't know what that is. <laughs> we, but that's support, we support you. <laughs> yeah. I think it's so nice to have someone who like. One of the nice things about hiring a coach or a consultant who is also brave is that whatever idea we come up with, they're like, all right, let's figure out how to make it work. Because I think mm -hmm. a lot of people, I have a litmus test for if people believe in themselves and it's to tell them um, something you want to do, right? So if like I'm telling uh, my parents like, hey, I want to start a company where... Um, I make leather armor for cats. Like I'm going to make it, it's going to be on Etsy. It's going to be super great. Like they're going to look like little dragons. It's going to be fabulous. My parents would be like, I don't even know what that is, but like 100% we're behind you because they believe in themselves. Right. But like what I have found is that if people don't believe in themselves, they really struggle to believe in you. And I think for early entrepreneurs, that can be so discouraging because like you're excited and you want to tell sure. people and you want those people to believe in you. And that's one of the reasons that I really recommend coaching early on in a business. So you can filter out all that noise from people who, A, probably don't know what they're doing. And now they just want to give you advice. It's like when you become a parent, everyone's like, oh, my God, you should raise your baby this way. And you're like, do you have a baby? Or you're like, I don't even like <laughs> your kid. amazing. So I'm not yeah. listening to you. <laughs> like, yeah. You don't have a kid or I don't even like your kid. So hard pass. Um, <laughs> and so you have someone who's like, OK, that's maybe doable. Let's find out. I'm not telling you it's not doable, but if it is doable, let's figure out how to do it. Yes. And I and just I love my coaches early. Yeah. And I, and I love really listening, not mm -hmm. just to what they're saying, not just to what my clients are saying, but how they're saying it. Mm -hmm. Like the strategy session that I did recently for the woman who was thinking of pivoting her business. One of her options was, or should I just like blow it all up and go back and, you know, work, for corporate work for a tech company yeah. and every time she said that she sounded annoyed mm -hmm. and every time she talked about pivoting and creating this new idea she got all excited mm -hmm. and you know you have to really listen and just and i told her because she said what should i do and you know <laughs> you know as a therapist i'm not telling you what to do although yeah. as a consultant and coach i can tell you what to do as a consultant i can but I just reflected back to her, like, you sound so excited and mm -hmm. happy when you talk about creating this new baby. Yeah. That I think you're I have telling found, that already. Right. People always know what to do. They just want yeah. validation. Yep. Like, they yeah. always know. I'm like, does, so, like, I hate drinking beer. I, it is not for me. Mm -hmm. I just, bleh, no, thank you. So, I'm like, if a decision feels like drinking beer, that would be the wrong decision. And if a decision know. feels like eating pizza that would be the right decision so it's like people mm -hmm. always know because you can watch them right when they talk about it like their sure. eyes light up or they cave in and it's like oh your body's trying to tell you you just have to listen like if, listen. if you're already annoyed about the idea of something uh you're gonna hate that <laughs> right, <laughs> you're right. Not gonna that. the information is there but yeah right i love that I love that. How do people find you? If they're like, my sure. mayor, Corey, we live. I am mostly on Instagram, Corey Zacker Consulting, or you can just look up my name on LinkedIn. I'm there too. And I'm happy to connect with anyone. How does LinkedIn work for you? You, you know, I, it does well. I spent, I spent most of the, I've always been on LinkedIn. I've been on there for years. I spend about the last year being more on Instagram. Mm -hmm. 
and mm -hmm. I love it over there. Um, but I thought I'd pop back to to LinkedIn again. So I'm only just starting to, to kind of get into it again and connect. Hmm. Um, but it seems a little less, um, a little smaller than Instagram. Instagram is yeah. so crowded and noisy now. I think that, it's like the forgotten know. steps, <laughs> steps like, <laughs> it's like LinkedIn. It's like, oh, there's yeah. people here. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's funny. So yeah, I mean, sure. People can reach me either place. If they want to find you, well, they'll be able to find you anyway. We'll have all the show notes. Great. So if people forget everything that we just talked about, which they shouldn't, <laughs> it was good. What do you want them to walk away with and remember? Um, just because you can doesn't mean you should. You know, you're doing all those things in your life and your business, but doesn't mean you have to. Yeah. And things are much easier to delegate than people think. Yes. It's so much easier. Yeah. You just have to get a little clarity on what you want to give away and delegate. And then, which is where yay, do, nay, giveaway yes. is very valuable. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Oh, well, yay. I feel like oh, entrepreneurs are going to walk away with like so many good gems. This is a great chat. I loved it. This was lovely. Thank you so much. Of course, my pleasure.